Hey, I'm Johnny. I'm Dylan. And we are two-fifths of the Congress Brothers. We're going to do another behind the song for our song Stand Up off 1929 Part 1. I think I wrote this song in 2011 and it just kind of sat on the back burner like a lot of our songs do. Without saying too much about the lyric, it's an, an alien love song is basically what I think of it as. So you can figure out what that means, because I don't know. Yeah, this track was featured in episode five of Bus Call, which is in South America, and we we kind of knew it from the start. It is? Yeah. Oh, okay. From the start of that episode, we knew that this song was gonna work because um, even though it was recorded a long time, or written a long time ago, Johnny had done this accordion solo that he recorded in his bedroom, which we ended up using on the original. And it just fit the kind of tango vibe of um, Argentina and all the other countries we went to. All right, we're going to kind of solo out some of the tracks now and really get into the nitty gritty of stand up. <laughs> so I guess we'll start with the kind of eight bar loop that this song got started with. The first thing I think that I really came up with was just the, a kick drum on this bass part. Just a simple little part going through a very simple chord sequence of G minor, C minor, D7, G minor, uh, just round and round. And then we added in this sound that we ended up using quite a lot on a couple of our albums now that we call the Scarface string sound. Because it kind of sounded like some of that uh, soundtrack of that movie Scarface. Made on a Native Instruments uh, massive synthesizer, and it's just kind of that soft fake string sound that it actually, and it sounds really nice to me. Added into that a little guitar part that I actually played, and when I say I played, I played like four notes and I kind of chopped them up and looped them into this little part here. We tried re recording it, but as so often is the case, we ended up using this demo sound that we had. Um, so you doubled the. Uh -huh. Scarface on the accordion. So that's actually two accordions playing basically the same part on left and right, but there's slight variations, so it kind of draws your ear left and right. The same thing on this, we end up using the original accordions that I recorded with a little crappy microphone sitting on my desk with the speakers blaring, because um, it just hap it captured the mood right, you know, again, try to re-record it didn't work out. So when we brought it into the studio, we tried various rhythmic approaches to the drums, but Jesse went and sat down at the kit one day and went into this, I don't even know what it technically is, kind of like a mambo type rhythm, a South American rhythm that he ended up using and then became the basis for this feel. Because it's very, they're almost a background element, I would say, for once <laughs> on this album. Just the drums are there to keep this driving thing going. As also with a lot of the tracks on this album, we took the drums and put towels all over them and really deadened them up and got this quite dry sound and then sent this through various distortions and uh, overdrift drove them on the compressors and that to get kind of a nice dirty uh, lo-fi sound. Added to this, we, we often felt that throughout this song we were lacking a kind of constant thread so again we try to find something really simple that would basically go throughout the entire song and hold the whole thing together. Uh, and that was this a little acoustic guitar playing through the entire song. Just I simple. Sent it through Danny's yeah. uh, mod synth, right? Didn't you? Yeah, we recorded this again, speakers up, Jesse sitting in front of a microphone, played this part the entire way through. Then we took that, sent it out to Danny's modular synthesizer, put kind of a spring reverb on it and a completely distorted filter I think we ended up using and it's a combination of all these things so it doesn't sound entirely natural but it's a nice sound that goes there throughout the entire song. And then uh, a synth backing that, those eighth notes um, yeah, just on the so acoustic guitar so it's, you can kind of sense the harmony from it a little better. And then the main vocal, I, I actually ended up doing a lot of re-recording of this. Leader? to just get it exactly right. This is one of the few songs that actually lyrically was easy freedom. for me. I often struggle with that and this one Look didn't change left. much from how it was originally. And tell me how you've lost your this way. is just me singing on a 
Look sure SM7, which I think we found is kind of the, my go-to microphone for almost everything again. I record. It seems to work nicely on my voice. So we'll jump ahead to the bridge of this song. There was originally a chorus on this song. Um, we decided to leave it out and just focus on this bridge becoming the chorus effectively. So it's actually still labeled bridge in our sequence here. Um, again, with a lot of my songs, I can often not hit the high range or if I can hit it, I have to scream it. So what we did is we had Dylan seeing the higher octave of that blended with me seeing the lower thing. So we often end up with these kind of unintentional duets that are not necessarily duets, but where I just can't hit those high kind of sweet notes. Uh, we also added Dylan singing this harmony throughout the bridges that really hi highlights and brings out the harmony, I think. Through this also just got real simple guitar parts, basically sort of uh, parts. So again, back to the basic chord loop of the verse section for this accordion solo that I think is the best accordion solo I've ever recorded. And I recorded in my room, same shitty technique that I used. And didn't I, this was one where we just said we're not even going to try and re-record it, so we did the best that we could to kind of clean up the extra noise. You can kind of hear in there the drums, and it's, it's a little harsh in areas, so we did the best we could to get it out of there, but there was no way we were going to get the performance right. You were going to re-record it, and we also said it's not even worth trying. Yeah, no, I mean, sometimes you just can't question your own unconscious genius. <laughs> get to this second bridge, we were very much into messing around with the Jupiter synthesizer. So I think we became a little synthesizer and arpeggio obsessed, but there were a couple songs where we removed it from tracks that we'd recorded on and then others where we kept it because it just worked so well. And I think this is one of the songs where it actually worked and didn't kind of detract from the song. And this song took, this section took a while to get the balance of um, this verse and bridge occurring at the same time. Where you're hearing verse with a variation of the melody against Dylan seeing that bridge slash chorus of the chorus melody. Same thing, just when you sit down at that Jupiter 8, and for coming up with a pad sound like this, it's it's almost it's really hard to come up with a bad sound. I I think on that synthesizer. I mean, you can come up with a so sound that's not necessarily right, but everything's just so rich and uh, it's got some kind of emotional content to it. And then on that high one, just adding that little bit of detuning, I think helps give it this wavering effect. Johnny always writes these choruses that are at the very, very top of my range, not that high. And it, on record, you're trying to hit the notes and sound sweet at the same time, whereas on the road, you can try to push it a little bit and you can hit those notes. But in the studio, it's always difficult to try to sound sweet and at the very top of your range. So. Yeah, I think I, Joey doesn't. He doesn't think about the <laughs> the range while he's writing, and then we get into the studio, and most of the parts have already been recorded. So it's kind of like, well, we got to do it this way. Yeah, in fact, I've I've been trying to learn from that and think about the performance. You know, because sometimes you write, I do a scratch vocal, and you think, oh, I'll get it, and then you're kind of too far down the road where it's too high, and perhaps you should have moved the whole song down a key or two. So this little end section here is basically just an instrumental restatement of the verse melody with this almost blatantly Jean-Michel Jarre sound that I uh, made on a massive, a Native Instruments massive synthesizer. Uh, because to me, the verse is actually more of the hook of this song than the chorus. It, this is what is the you know thing I think that draws a lot of people to this song. 
So we just finished on this thing, and there's a bit of this like that false build up that we did. We're expecting to go massive, but it doesn't. It's a little understated, perhaps. With the lyric, if I could change the um, flow of time, the arps are kind of flowing back and forth between eighth notes and triplets, right? Or 16th yeah. notes and triplets. Yeah, that's something Danny was messing around with because I think I had a simple 16th note arpeggio and he said, why don't you try this on the end of each four bar phrase. Um, I'll play one here. So this is just straight 16th with the last phrase. Goes to a triplet feel. He said, Just "Try doing that." And then, obviously, as Dylan's saying, it makes a lot of sense in relation, kind of metaphorically, to the lyrics. Uh, we did a lot of kind of interesting ear candy panning and stuff in this bridge section. While we're singing, look left. A lot of stuff's pulling your attention to the right, and vice versa. Just try to think about that section, uh, listening on headphones, um, which obviously is how a lot of people are listening to music. These days, a lot more people are. All right, thanks for watching this behind the song of Stand Up, uh, another song from 1929. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, watch Bus Call, go stream the album, and check us out on tour. Bye.